Hello, we are happy to be with you again. This is the third session about ancient civilizations. Today, we will deal with vocabulary, grammar, and morphology. Hello, Mrs. Ben Khalil. Hello, Mr. Dahmas. Hello, everybody. What activity have you prepared to revise vocabulary today? Today, we are going to deal with matching words with their definitions. Let's start. Consider the examples that are on the board and focus on the underlined words, please. The Phoenicians were able to found trading posts in Tunisia and Algeria. Ecosium, present the Algiers, was invaded by the Vandals and destroyed in the 5th century AD. The pyramids were built during the Pharaoh's reign. The Phoenicians invented the new alphabet based on the Egyptian hieroglyphs. King Nebuchadnezzar II was a great sovereign. Ancient Egyptians didn't use to bury the pharaohs because they were considered as gods. Let's start now by reading the words. Found, invaded, reign, hieroglyphs, sovereign, and bury. Remember that when we did the exercise last time, I told you that when matching words and definitions or synonyms, you have to pay attention to the category of word you are matching. Let's see now the, the words we have in the table. Found, invaded, and bury, that are one, two, and six, are verbs. Now let's move to the definitions. We're going to read them and find which definitions start with verbs. Ruler, such as king, queen, or emperor. Period of rule or sovereignty. Put the base of something before building it. Place a dead body in the ground. Pictures or symbols used in the writing of ancient Egypt. Enter the country with armed forces to occupy it. Among the definitions we have just read, which definitions start with verbs? Good. Definitions C, D, and F start with verbs. So let's match each one, which word, with its corresponding definition. As you can notice, the verb invaded is the only one in the past simple. Which definition starts with a past simple? Good, definition F. So we can say that invaded goes with definition F, entered a country with armed forces to occupy it. The second, the two other verbs, found and bury, are in the infinitive. Found is to put the base of something before building it. Pay attention, this is the verb to found, not the verb to find. Pay attention. The second one, bury, which is to place a dead body in the ground. Now let's move to the other words. Hieroglyphs. This is a noun in the plural. So have a look at your definitions. Find which definition corresponds to this word. Good. The definition is E, which are pictures or symbols used to, in the writing of ancient Egypt. The next two other words are nouns in the singular, reign and sovereign. Which definition corresponds to each of them? The word number three, reign, corresponds to definition B, the period of rule or sovereignty, and the last one, the sovereign is a ruler such as a king, queen, or emperor. That's all for our vocabulary exercise today, Mr. Dahmas. Thank you very much, Mrs. Ben Khalil. The second part of our, of our lesson today deals with grammar. You certainly remember that in the last session, I asked you to revise the lessons about the use of used to, had to, was or were able to. Mrs. Ben Khalil is going to explain more. All right. 
Let's start our grammar lesson. Study the following sentences and complete the table later with had to, used to, or was we are able to, to get their meaning. Let's read the sentences together. The Sumerians had to import the raw materials because they were not available in their region. The Sumerians were able to control the flooding of the Euphrates by building huge banks on the sides of the river. The Sumerians used to live in present-day Iraq. Now, complete the table with had to, was we are able to, or used to, to get their meaning, which is written in the table. One of them represents past habits that no longer happen. The second one, past necessity or obligation. And the last, past achievements requiring great effort. Are you ready to correct now? Okay, let's go. Used to is the language form we use to express past habits that no longer happen. Had to are used to express past necessity or obligation. And the last one, was and we are able to, are used to express past achievements requiring great effort. Notice that the three forms are followed by the verbs in the infinitive without to. Let's practice now. Fill in the gaps with used to, had to, or was we are able to, to get a meaningful text. A hundred years ago, Gardaya was an important town. Market day, blank, be Saturday. Though the market was far, hundreds of men from remote villages, blank, reached it to buy fruit, vegetables and other goods. The most important product was carpets. They, blank, be the most beautiful in the, in the West. Women in Gardaya made carpets because they, blank, help men with the home expenses. I suppose you had enough time to do the, your exercise? Let's correct. A hundred years ago, Gardaya was an important town. Market day? Yes, good. Used to be Saturday. Though the market was far, hundreds of men from remote villages were able to reach it to buy fruit, vegetables, and other goods, right? The most important product was carpets. They, good, they used to be the most beautiful in Algeria. Women in Gardaya used to make carpets and sell them because they had to help men with the expenses. Right, you were great. Let's move to the second activity now. Rewrite sentence B so that it means the same as A. One, in the past, many Algerian cities had Roman names. Start the second sentence B with many Algerian cities and complete it. Second one, A, Talq ibn Ziyad managed to defeat the Spaniards and invade Andalusia. B, start with Tarq ibn Ziyad and complete it. Third sentence, the Sumerians were obliged to build dams because some of their regions were too dry. Start sentence B with the Sumerians. Right. Don't forget that you are studying used to, had to, was, were able to. So we are going to correct and see in which sentences we use each of them. The first one, many Algerian cities used to have Roman names, good. The second one, Talq ibn Ziyad was able to defeat the Spaniards and invade Andalusia. And the third one, the Sumerians had to build dams because some of their regions were too dry. That's good. Right, let's move now to our second grammar lesson. 
Today we are going to deal with quantifiers and their comparative and superlative forms. Let's read the sentences together. Today, few countries neglect their cultural heritage. We have little information about certain ancient civilizations. There are many historical sites in the world. We don't have much knowledge about the earliest times of the city of Algiers. What do the words in bold type indicate? Good, they indicate quantities, so they are quantifiers. Now focus on the underlined words that come just after. Which ones are countable and which ones are uncountable? Complete the table, please. Countries, sites, right, these are countable nouns. Information and knowledge are uncountable nouns. Good. Now, which quantifiers are used with countable nouns and which ones are used with uncountable nouns? Complete the table. Right. Many is used with countable nouns. Little is used with uncountable nouns. The third one, much, is used with uncountable nouns. And the last one, few, is used with countable nouns. Right. Let's move now to the recapitulation. Complete these two sentences to get the rules. We use and before and we use and before. You can uh, get help with the table we have just completed. Right. We use many and few before countable nouns and we use much and little before uncountable nouns. Good. Let's move now to the comparison of these quantifiers. The table that you have in front of you summarizes the different forms of comparatives, equality, superiority and inferiority, as well as the superlative form. Notice that the comparative of equality is used with as and as, and that the adjective, that the quantifier does not change as many as. It's the same with much, as much as. The same with as few as and as little as. We get the comparative of superiority with only the two quantifiers many and much. The comparatives are more than for both many and much. We get the comparative of inferiority with the two other quantifiers, few and little, few has as comparative fewer than and little less than, right? Let's move to the superlatives now. The superlatives of many and much is the most. The one of little is the least and the one of few is the fewest. Okay, let's have now an exercise to practice what we have studied. Rewrite sentence B so that it means the same as A. No country in North Africa has as much access to the Sahara and the Mediterranean as Algeria. Start sentence B with Algeria has and complete it. Second sentence, of all the sites in southern Algeria, the Tassili Najer has the most prestige. So start the second sentence, B, with no other site in southern Algeria has, and complete the sentence. And the last one, Algiers used to have less influence on international commerce than the other Algerian maritime cities. Complete the sentence, starting with other Algerian maritime cities used to have, and complete the sentence. I suppose now you are ready 
to get the correction of the first sentence. Let's do it together. No country in North Africa has as much access to the Sahara and the Mediterranean as Algeria. So Algeria has the most access to the Mediterranean and the Sahara. Good. The second one. Of all the sites in southern Algeria, the Tassili Najer has the most prestige. This means that no other site in southern, has, in southern Algeria has as much prestige as the Tassili Najer. And the last one, Algiers used to have less influence on international commerce than the other Algerian maritime cities. This means that the other Algerian maritime cities used to have more influence on international commerce than Algiers. That's all for our grammar activity today, Mr. Dahmas. Thank you, Mrs. Ben Khalil. You're welcome. The third part of our course today deals with morphology. We will see how to divide words into roots and affixes. By the way, what do we mean by affixes, Mrs. Ben Khalil? By affixes, we mean prefixes and suffixes. Let me give you an example. Endo developed. The root word is develop. So under is the prefix and ed is the suffix. This is what you are going to do in the next activity. Follow the table, please. Divide the following words into root and affixes, prefix and suffix, as shown in the example I have just given you and are developed. Let me read the words to give you some time to do the activity. Uncivilized, historical, undoubtedly, disagree, inhabitant, unknown, decipherable. Let's start correcting word by word. The first word. Civilize is the root word, so the prefix is an, and the suffix is d. The second word. Historical. History is the root word, and the suffix cul. The third one, undoubtedly. The prefix is un, doubt only is the root, and here we have two suffixes, ed and l and y, li. The next word, disagree. In this word, we have only a prefix. By the way, you are not obliged to always have a prefix and a suffix. Sometimes you have just a prefix, other times just a suffix, and in some words we have both a prefix and a suffix. So disagree has only got a prefix, and agree is the root word. Inhabitant, here pay attention. The IN is part of the root word. It's to inhabit, and we have only got a suffix. Ent. The next word, unknown, here we have two parts or three parts, a prefix un, the root no, and n for the suffix. And the last word now, decipherable, the root word decipher and the suffix able. That's all for our morphology exercise, Mr. Dahmas. Thank you, Mrs. Ben -Khalil. You're welcome. That's all for today. Uh, the next session will be the last one uh, about ancient civilizations. In our grammar session or in our grammar course, we will insist on uh, expressing concession. So get ready. Thank you for attention. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>